welcome everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, my name is uh, Siobhan McGurk and uh, I'm a graduate student in the anthropology department. And I'm also in the um, Greenberg seminar, uh, seri uh, seminar series. I'm a third year in that. Um, I'm currently doing my field work in Worcester, Massachusetts, so I'm not actually a TA at the moment. Um, but the reason that we, uh, Kate and I, wanted to do this session was really realizing that um, talking to our uh, colleagues in our departments that um, TAing experiences were very different between people and there was a little bit of not being sure, being nervous about what we were doing and what we were getting out of it. And um, I think the Greenberg seminar series gave everyone a really good chance to talk about that, but only those students who were in the Greenberg seminar series. So we wanted to um, kind of broaden that up and invite uh, people from um, the faculty to give their opinions and views, students do the same, and then um, some kind of uh, information about the kind of training and resources that are available at AU um, from the uh, Office of the Provost. So um, hopefully this session will be quite relaxed. Um, we're not presenting for very long, each of us, um, to give maximum time to questions and discussions. And we really encourage um, not just questions for the panelists, but actually discussion. So um, anything that resonates with you or you think that we've not talked about enough, then uh, we really look forward to you chiming in on that. And it is being um, filmed and put on online, right? Mm -hmm. um, so there you go. So your opinions will hopefully resonate beyond this, this classroom here today. Um, so I think I've uh, introduced my, myself adequately. Um, this is uh, Kate Stewart, a third year doctoral student in the clinical psychology program and a good friend of mine. Um, and then we were going to have uh, Emily Steinmetz um, from the anthropology department. Unfortunately, she can't, uh, she can't make it today. Um, so um, but that's okay. We'll, we'll survive. Um, and then we have uh, Tony here, from, also from um, the psychology department and very senior faculty. So drawing on a wealth of experience to, uh, to really help us improve our TA. Um, and then we have uh, Martin, Martin Olivet, um, from the Department of Philosophy and Religious Studies or Religion? Religion. Religion. Yeah. Um, but who was also invited by the uh, Provost's Office to come and help uh, lead their, their trainings on um, TA mentorship and uh, guidance. And then Marche should be um, coming in, she said 10 minutes late, but we'll give her a bit of leeway. Uh, she could be um, later and she was going to talk to us about the kind of resources available um, at AU. So, um, Kate and I will, will start. And really it was after talking about our experiences informally we decided to um, to run this session, but also so that we didn't just come in here mm -hmm. and um, give only anecdotal um, or, or limited kind of um, impressions, we designed a, a survey for our uh, colleagues to, to share their views. Um, and it's all within uh, AU, so we've gleaned a little bit of a broader view from, from using this survey, so I'll pass on to Kate to introduce that. Yeah, so um, we designed this short survey, we just wanted to get a sense of um, grad students experiences and satisfaction with being a TA at AU. So we sent it out to the Greenberg cohorts, uh, years one, two, and three. Um, we also sent it to the gradu graduate leadership councils for CAS, SOC, and SPA, um, as well as the departmental graduate mailing list. I think just anthropology, right? I kind of shirked my duty on that one and did not <laughs> send it to psychology. Um, so most of the respondents were um, from CAS, about 70% of the 47 respondents overall, 23% um, came from SIS and then just a couple of people from SPA and SOC. So it is um, not necessarily a representative sample of the uh, TA population. Um, but we just wanted to get, again, a general sense of where people stood in terms of what their experiences were like. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to present to you um, the items that we included on the questionnaire and then just people's average, uh, the average scores. Um, and we had them rate on a scale of a Likert scale of one to five, one being strongly disagree to five strongly agree. Um, the first item was I understood what my responsibilities were as a TA. 
And you can see here that 4.26 people generally felt that they did understand what their responsibilities were. Um, they generally enjoyed their responsibilities as a TA. Um, they felt that their work was important for their graduate training and development as a teacher. Um, and also felt that their work gave them a sense of personal accomplishment and satisfaction, 3.87 on a scale of uh, 1 to 5. Um, in terms of getting recognition for what they were actually doing, um, and this is general, it could be from their instructor, the faculty advisor, um, as well as students, but generally people felt like they were getting appropriate recognition for what they were doing. Um, people were also generally satisfied with the faculty advisor and felt that they collaborated well together to meet course objectives. Um, and finally, just again, as a summary, they're overall satisfied with their teaching assistantship, which is good to hear, at least in this sample. Of course, it could be that people who um, felt more neutral about their position or maybe felt negatively about it were not as inclined to complete the survey. And so that's a possibility as well um, to keep in mind. Um, we also want to get a sense of how much time people were spending on their, on their TA position. Um, and so in general, people felt like they were spending as much time as was required by the, the position, um, for example, 20 hours per week or less than that. Um, few respondents felt like they were spending more time than was required. Um, in terms of contact with students, um, of course, it'll vary by position whether or not there, there should be a lot of contact with students, right? Some TAs just are um, asked to really just grade assignments and not even meet their students at all um, or hold office hours. And so we didn't assess that, but overall just looking at um, whether students did make contact, um, which could be important in classes where there is an expectation that there will be contact between uh, the TA and students. We found that um, about a third of respondents only contact, made contact with their students or were approached by their students um, once or twice during the semester. Um, and then one to three times per month, about a quarter of the, the respondents, um, four times per month or about once a week, 11% of the respondents. And then finally, about a third of the respondents were making much more regular contact with their students, more than four times per month. Again, we don't know who, uh, what the positions were that, um, that these respondents had. So that is further information that would be helpful. Um, and then amount of time spent interacting with students, either in person or via email. Um, this is kind of, you know, I came up with this scale. I'm not sure um, there could have been a, maybe a better way to break it down, but just, just again, a descriptive um, look at how much time people were interacting with their students. Less than an hour, about 13% of TAs were spending less than an hour per semester interacting with their students in person or via e email. Um, and then over a quarter of TAs were spending one to three hours a semester. Um, yeah, you can see right here. <laughs> in terms of um, more than seven hours a semester, these might be student uh, TAs who are actually teaching their own classes. There are a quarter of them doing that. Um, yeah, and then also in this survey, we did want to get a sense of people's, um, we wanted to let people respond more freely about their experiences, so we did include a couple of open, um, open response questions at the end, and we will share relevant ones, we'll intersperse them throughout the rest of the talk. Okay. Um, so we really uh, found this to, uh, it raised a lot more questions really. We, our response to this was like, oh, we should have asked more questions or more specific questions. Um, but there was a few, a few responses, or quite a lot of the responses that were the open-ended ones that really prompted us to um, think a lot more critically about um, what we should really present as a representative of the student uh, body. Um, so in discussion uh, and in response to looking at the, the, the survey results, um, we came up with the, the kind of basic idea that TAs, or t TAs have three main purposes, three main roles. The first one is to help the students learn. That's the T in the TA. That's the teaching, right? Um, that's the ultimate priority. Um, we're there to, to teach in some way, to, to offer guidance. Um, and I think that's something not to lose sight of in, in this discussion, but also in the uh, general discussions outside of 
these kind of spaces um, when we're talking with our colleagues about what we're getting from the TA and uh, experience and how we're relating to the faculty member, not to forget that there's students who you know, we need to think about what they're getting out of it as well. The second part was um, the A. We're an assistant. So we're helping the, the instructors or the faculty members teach. Um, it's a job that we're assigned in, in most cases. It's, it's the job that we're paid to do. Um, and I think that it's, again, important to regard it as such. This is a job. It has a job description. We're a kind of support worker. And then finally, but maybe not finally, thirdly, equally even thirdly, um, to learn something ourselves, to develop as teachers ourselves. And uh, as a student from the UK, I've got to say that one of the reasons I... Um, come on up, come on up. Um, glad you can join us. I'm sorry it was such a hectic way to get here. So, um, Kate and I are just presenting on the student side of things first. Okay. Um, everyone, this is Marche. Oh, sorry. <laughs> the Rebecca Carnival Connected Avenue and it... Oh. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's all right, Emily couldn't make it at all. Oh, goodness. So, you know, you're one up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, so, yeah, I, I wanted to come to the US and American University in particular because of the value placed on training uh, graduate students to be teachers. It's something that um, is sorely lacking in, in the UK um, institutions um, that, that I've had contact with. Um, so, so really that's the, the third vital component of the TA assignments that we're, we're there to, to develop and to, to learn something ourselves. Um, so I'm going to pass back to uh, Kate to talk more about the, um, the narrative responses that, that we got and, and how we respond to those in our own experiences. So in general, I have very much enjoyed being a TA. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think that's important to note. Um, it wasn't ex I, I didn't have many expectations about what that would be like, but it has been definitely one of the highlights of um, my training in this program. And I think that a big reason for that, one reason, is that I have felt that my role as a TA has always mattered to some degree. It's been valuable. Um, and this is not necessarily the case, though. So we see from a couple of these open responses, um, for example, um, there's some inconsistency across professors um, or classes. Some some treated me, some uh, instructors treated me as a grading and attendance robot, while others uh, took a collaborative approach and incorporated my ideas and feedback, let me experiment with class exercises, give a lecture. Um, so, of course, grading is uh, a big part of being a TA and is very helpful, um, but to feel that that's your only uh, role and that um, really you don't serve a purpose otherwise can at times maybe be a little bit, can make the position difficult. So in terms of the value of the role, I think that that can be conveyed directly by the instructor, which has been my experience. Um, what you're doing matters and it's helpful. Um, in addition to that, the responsibilities that were given themselves can indicate the value of the role. So I've been fortunate enough to be able to lead review sessions before exams. Um, contact with the students and for their contact with me has been encouraged by the instructor. Um, learning how to grade well, so for example, developing rubrics to grade um, and seeing assessment as an important skill to learn, I think um, can is an option, especially for those classes where grading is the main, the main um, role of the TA. Um, also how to give feedback to students, for example. These are just ideas of how the, the role of being a TA has felt valuable to me and therefore has been more enjoyable. Um, and again, this is just another example of, uh, I'm a little uncomfortable reading. <laughs> 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 so no. we had one response that said, um, I don't know why it was written like it was directed at us, so obviously there was <laughs> <laughs> something they wanted to get off. Yeah. Um, but treat me like an assistant teacher, not as your secretary, and not as some annoying student, student uh, for whom you have to find busy work. So, yeah, I think that, um, again, sometimes we will have to play administrative roles, um, and 
that is okay. I think that how that is how that's framed by the instructor, for example, and and the um, appreciation that's expressed are two ways to kind of make that um, more enjoyable and more valuable. Um, and we saw an interesting comment. Um, you know, this person said fall 2013 was very difficult, and I think that more responsibility would have helped to ease that difficulty. Um, there could have been a typo here. Maybe this person <laughs> meant that less responsibility. But our interpretation of it is that um, having more work isn't necessarily problematic. In fact, it might show that there are useful things that we could be doing with our time. And that can contribute to the value of the role. I think that's, yeah. Yep. yeah. Um, so then uh, a second point we wanted to move on to after that is the, the importance of um, communication. So. Uh, a lot of things that came up in terms of like, how am I valued and how am I seen are things that we feel can be uh, addressed and improved through good communication. Um, and uh, so one of the responses um, in the general comments section was when communication has been clear and direct with faculty advisors and expectations have been clearly laid out, the TA experience has been great. And I really appreciated the way that this was um, framed because it has, it's, seen, it's two way, right? So when communication has been clear and direct with faculty advisors, that's not putting all the emphasis on the faculty. You know, they're, they're, they're letting us know that they were part of maintaining that clear and direct communication. Um, in my own experience, um, something I would add to that is to say that um, early communication is very important as well so that you can have time ahead of the semester starting to say, well, what are the... Um, course objectives overall, what kind of teacher am I working with, knowing that you can offer back some skills that they might not know you as an individual have. Um, so in my background includes filmmaking and when I was working on a, a course last year, um, I worked with the, the, advi the um, instructor and she had a class section that was um, dedicated to an art project. Um, it's a linguistics course and she wanted to look at non-verbal communication. So I said, well, this is really great and actually I can, I can teach this as a film class. And she said, that's an excellent idea. So we re-jigged the syllabus a little bit to spread it over two classes so we could have more time and to make it a dedicated film project. If I had waited till the day before class, I wouldn't have been able to have that conversation with her to let her know what I could offer and she wouldn't have been able to... Um, really consider that and put that into her, her syllabus if she so wanted it. You know. um, so communication really uh, important and valuable because it can open new opportunities. Um, so then we also had uh, this case. My TA hours were split evenly between two professors. I sometimes felt they had not coordinated clearly am among each other how much tasks I should be given so that I felt sometimes overwhelmed. And again, I thought this was useful because it's not speaking to my own experience of working in that kind of environment where there's multiple professors, but really um, emphasizing the importance that I think is a general lesson of um, how we treat our students and how we treat our colleagues is relevant to the TA ex experience. So we want to give our students advance notice, so we want to give our TAs advance notice, and we want to give our faculty members advance notice of uh, of uh, changes, skills, all those kind of things, and to really um, treat each other as uh, as, as colleagues. Um, but here it seems like the professors weren't really treating each other as colleagues, and that had a knock-on effect. Um, so yeah, so meet regularly in advance and invite communication. If it's if it's not forthcoming, then um, instigate it. Yeah, I just want to emphasize the inviting part because I think that grad students, some of us. Um, might have a, might not be inclined to approach a faculty member who, you know, is an authority figure in a way, and so having kind of an inviting attitude um, towards communication, I think, can be helpful. So our last point that we want to talk about is um, is is similar to this idea of grad students not being a little bit timid. Some of us might feel a little bit anxious about being um, thrust into this new position of teaching assistant, which is, 
you know, we're still a student and yet we're not peers of the undergraduates. Um, we're not quite sure what we should be doing. We think that we're smart, but there's a lot that we don't know. So there's anxiety around the role. Um, and getting guidance as well as some feedback about how we're doing, I think, has, has proven quite helpful for me in my experience. So, um, for example, here, um, this student shared that, uh, or this grad student shared, I'm teaching a subject I don't have much experience with, I feel nervous and unqualified, I wish I had more supporting background information <laughs> so I could teach my students with confidence. Yeah, um, and on, I have felt in this position as well before, and so getting, um, getting some guidance on how to teach, I think, is something that, that is maybe not emphasized enough, um, as well as getting feedback on how can we manage the, like, the nerves around the situation. Um, being confident, I think, is something that we build over time by just practicing. Um, also getting feedback from the faculty can be hugely helpful in building our confidence just a little bit. Um, and this goes along with the first point on guidance, um, but it wasn't until I started teaching my own classes that I realized, wow, I wish my professors had actually spent time talking with me about what it means to be a good teacher. Mm -hmm. So um, again, kind of, I, I think that TAs generally, I at least I know, am um, eager to learn more about how to be a teacher, <coughs> and um, I'm interested in in getting, you know, picking the, my faculty member's brain for their knowledge about how, how to do that. Um, and getting that guidance and that feedback, I think, should be prioritized. Um, I will just say that some of the <laughs> highlights, uh, some of my most memorable, like, TA moments included, one, I, uh, I had to create exam questions for, um, Tony Aaron's over here, who is the <laughs> instructor, and he sent me a quick, casual email one evening just stating, you make good exam questions and it's very helpful, and it made my night. I mean, I will never forget that because I felt like, okay, I'm on the right track here with what I'm doing and I'm contributing something. Um, and, and I also remember getting an email at the end of this past semester um, from my <laughs> instructor over here. Um, <laughs> And I, didn't, I, I thought maybe it would be um, instructions on an assignment for class, um, which is important. And instead it was just, thank you very much for all your hard work. Uh, it's really great. And that, that stood out to me. I still remember that. Um, in terms of feedback, the last point is um, getting feedback from faculty can be quite helpful. There might be opportunities to also give feedback, depending on the nature of the relationship, um, to the faculty. <laughs> Right? I mean, in an <laughs> ideal world, that would be a good thing. It would be helpful. We'd be uh, collaborative in that way, and it, we wouldn't, you know, feel, well, we'd be collaborative. <laughs> so, and this, um, this individual said, when I observed my faculty supervisors in action in the classroom, I was often disappointed in how disconnected they were from their students. This is just a snippet of one person's experience and observations in maybe one or two classes. But it shows that um, we do have some valuable insights or observations potentially sometimes and those ought to be encouraged um, for the benefit of the students, for us and for the faculty as well. Yeah. I was just going to add to that yeah. that um, Anna who was um, who involved in with us in, in designing this, this panel but who couldn't be here um, say unfortunately, she gave similar feedback. She's she was an MA student, so a little bit different maybe from, from our, ex well, definitely from our experiences. Um, and she was a, a TA who in her second year was effectively TAing for courses that she had just taken the year before. Mm -hmm. So she felt that she had a lot of very valuable feedback to give and felt a little bit frustrated that, um, that the people she was working with didn't really, they saw her in a completely new role. So it goes back to that, um, you can give feedback based on your uh, own experiences uh, inside the classroom, so responding to students, but also from you know, other, other experiences that you know, maybe have been taking the class with a different instructor. How, how did it work out? So I think that um, it going both ways is, is really uh, important. And um, we'll uh, close there. We're going to um, hear from Emily Steinmetz, who's um, a junior faculty member, about kind of making the transition from 
TA to instructor to being given a TA and uh, what to do with that. But um, unfortunately, she couldn't make it. But um, I think Tony's going to uh, <laughs> give us a lot, a lot to, a lot of meat to chew on. So we'll pass over to you. Okay. And I'm going to pull out my cell phone so I can keep track of time a little bit. Okay. Um, what's the point? Um, <laughs> I'm actually asking that rhetorically, but. If we're thinking about what makes for an effective interaction of, of faculty and TAs, we've got to have an idea of, of what effective means. What, what are we trying to affect? And I don't think we think very much about that. Um, and at the level of higher education, there's a beautiful quote, which I'm going to butcher from Judith Shapiro, who's I think then President Bryn Mawr, that the point of education is that at the end, um, the inside of people's minds can be an interesting place to live. Um, if you think that's the purpose of education, you're going to approach what you do in the classroom and what you also then do with TAs to affect that differently than if you have other sorts of goals. Um, in the last few months, I've become familiar with some work by um, Parker Palmer. He has a book called The Courage to Teach. And he talks about subject-centered learning. So the idea is that when, when you're in the classroom, think about where the center is. What's the point? Where, where, where are you pointing towards? Is is the point the student, is the point you, which usually is where I want it to be, anyway, um, or is it on the subject? Um, and Palmer suggests focus on the subject. That's going to be the center. There are a lot of things that can distract us from that, um, that keep us from looking at the subject itself. Um, I think about learning objectives, which is, is a focus on this. Um, in principle, learning objectives can be a great thing. Um, in practice, I think often as professors and as assistants, we get very busy, overwhelmed, and the objectives can stand in place of the subject itself. Um, there's a beautiful example I heard many years ago that the assigned to Mumbai is not Mumbai. Uh, so our learning objectives are sort of signposts towards where we're trying to go. Um, so I, as I talk about working with TAs, Part of what I keep in mind is something like subject-centered learning. And when I'm thinking about being effective, I'm thinking about what makes us effective towards that. So practically, what does this mean? I'm going to talk about some ideals. As Kate has mentioned, she has been my TA. We will see whether she can keep a straight face as I talk about what the <laughs> ideals are. Um, first thing um, that I think is critical for working with our TAs is, is making them both aware of and comfortable of what they don't know. Um, so I, as a professor, I know like this much. My students know a little bit less, so I can sort of feign um, omniscience. Um, but the truth is that I'm sitting here not knowing stuff. I'm, I'm focused at the subject that still, after um, 30 years or so of learning, I'm still trying to master, I'm still trying to understand. So can we help our, our TAs focus on the subject that's larger than any of our brains can handle and point towards that, or are we giving them the illusion of, of certainty instead? And so one of the things that I try to push is, you don't know that. <laughs> Letting them know that. Letting myself not know it. A very small practical thing. Um, it, it, I'm not sure how I'd approach this from the TA side, but as a faculty, um, every now and then, at least and hopefully I did this with you, I, I asked her, what do you think about that class? And I run through alternatives. Um, when you design a class, there are a gazillion different ways you could teach the material. And you choose one. And when I was a student, and also when I was a TA, I thought, oh, that's the way to teach. Mm -hmm. um, and well, no, that's one. There, there are a lot of alternatives. So do you take the opportunity with the student to say, well, I, I use this approach but I weighed this one, this one, this one, whether it's how to respond to a question, whether it's how to structure a given class, that there are alternatives and use the different alternatives for different purposes. Um, part of my interest in that is, I, I think when we're teaching, often there's a, a huge emphasis on learning styles. And interestingly, the data on learning styles are very sketchy. Um, there's very little, I think, emphasis on teaching style. Um, and I suspect that different faculty, which are TAs, who some of them will sometimes grow up to be, will have different styles. And perhaps what we ought to be thinking about is presenting students with a whole bunch of different models of teaching styles 
so that they can try them on and figure out which actually work for them or which work within a particular context. So this idea, well, I did it this way, but I could have done it this way or this way, can convey some of that sense of stuff. Second, do we treat our TAs as human beings? Um, which uh, I liked a couple of the quotes that showed up before. Um, I try to make sure that they're just grading robots. No. Um, so, step back and think about how, how do I think about what makes for an effective TA uh, teacher response? I, I reflected back on some of my graduate student experiences. What were those like? Um, and my very first guest lecture was in a class, my professor, it was the last class he taught, he was dying of cancer. Uh, those of you who are social psychologists, Merrill Carl Smith, who did the boring study, cognitive dissonance. Um, and there was a day where he said, you know, I'm not going to be able to teach class this day. Um, do, do you want to teach it or else it's just not going to do it? So I did this class. Merrill, uh, Merrill was there. And after we talked about it and pointed out some good things, he said, you know, I've never seen that particular explanation for chi-square before, which is, it was a stats class. Um, and I reflected on that, and I, I think I talked proudly about where I learned it. Um, and then I thought about it, and I came back later on to realize, you know, I really butchered that, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> um, and Merrill's approach to corrective was a way that invited me to sort of explore, figure out what was going on that did that. So he didn't, he, he treated me very much as a human there. Um, thinking about TAs, I've had, I've had um, TAs who've had health problems uh, during the course of the semester. What do we do as faculty when that happens? You know, it's a semester, so you end up spending a little bit more time maybe doing some things you wouldn't have done. And you, your TA is a human who's got some health issues. Work with it. Um, I had a TA once who wanted my opinion on every answer, so it's a grading. It's like every five minutes, well, what about this as an answer? And it's like, you know, autonomy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I gotta learn autonomy. So treating people as humans sometimes is, is making accommodations for them, and sometimes it's pushing them. Um, but you're starting with the, the idea that they're human. Again, going back to, to Parker Palmer, how do we teach? We focus, I think, on a lot of technique. And Palmer suggests that a lot of how we teach is through who we are and that human interaction can matter. Um, third thing, and I have, I have no idea answer for what, whatever. Um, if I go too long. Third practical thing I think of for professors, and again, I'm, I'm not sure how this, this conveys to TAs, is do you teach by example? Um, so I'll talk about this at a couple of levels. One is at a very general level. If it's subject-centered learning, as a teacher, do you love the material? Are you focused on the material? Um, I think at our best as professors, we do. I think at our worst, we fall into cynicism. We've seen this a lot. We're thinking, I need a paycheck. Um, I need to get to my research, so I'm just going to do this. And if our students are going to be the teachers of the future, what do you want? Do you want your students to, to be cynical students or do you want them to love the material? So I think it's important for, for developing that, that teaching assistant relationship to love the material. Um, little disciplines. How do you show the discipline of being a professor? Uh, my dissertation advisor um, did one just very small thing. The hour before class, he took no appointments, he would see nobody. It was, do not, the building's burning down, think about talking to me. Um, but that hour was sacred. It was getting his head in the game. Um, what are the little ways that as professors we can model for our students the example? Um, in my 150 person intro psychish class, um, I give essays. Yes, 150 people write essays, most of which my TA is great, um, <laughs> but I always make sure that I take one. Um, and in part, that's to show this isn't scut work. This is something that is important to do. It is my, I believe it's important. You should believe it's important. I'm going to put the time into it. Part of it is to give myself the temperature of the class. I want to have that. But again, I think you know, leading, if you're going to lead, you've got to lead by example. Um, otherwise, people will not end up following. 
Okay, so that's, if, if I was thinking about the overarching point for what I wanted to say that I've thought about over the years, it's really, you got to know what you're trying to do before you can know if you're doing it well. And reflect on what you think is, is important for that. And then again, those three, which uh, the idea of, again, um, uh, you teach people that they don't know, uh, treat them like human beings, lead by example. Okay, some very small things that I'd say. Um, make the expectations. Make the main expectations clear ahead of time. There will be surprises. There will be things that just happen. Um, my, I think your first semester with me, my back went out, um, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden I was dictating an exam to Kate over the phone, lying in my bed, <laughs> on some weird meds. Anyway, um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, I know I, I didn't tell her that that was going to be a responsibility, but, yeah, <laughs> but uh, you can, you have a pretty good sense of where the big time crunches are going to be. Let the students know, have that communication, so you know when those are going to be. Um, give opportunities. Kate mentioned doing review sessions, um, doing a guest lecture. What are opportunities that you can find for a student to develop? Um, and then also seizing opportunities. I, I, I Kate mentioned that she writes sample questions. Um, and partly, I, I will confess, I hate writing questions. It is one of the, 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 the parts of being a professor I like the least. But I do write a chunk of them. I find it helpful, but it's also an opportunity, I, I do my cognitive dis distance reduction, to <laughs> get the student to have to think about, well, what was this? How do I think about what this was? And in thinking about the questions you're asking, you also think about what you're teaching. Um, and I think that I will leave it at that. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, should we switch? Oh, yes, yeah. so that you can, you can control your own uh, PowerPoint here. So no one gets confused. <laughs> okay. Hi, my name is Marche Hall, and I'm a project assistant um, with the Office of Graduate Studies, and I'm presenting um, with Dr. Oliver um, in the philosophy department. Um, we have some resources that we have for teaching assistants that I think um, will help you kind of increase that communication between yourself and your professor, and then also for professors to kind of be open to uh, to dialogue and working with your teaching assistants to some, perhaps eliminate some of the problems that came up in uh, Shabon's presentation. First of all, kind of what our office does, um, we've written up a set of guidelines. They're not hard and fast rules, but they're kind of a springboard for communication for teaching assistants. And I've also brought some copies, um, if you'd like to take one to kind of learn about uh, time commitment, different things like that that can help you kind of smooth your experience. Um, we've also started a new set of training sessions. Um, those are held at the beginning of each year. Um, I think this past year we held about six training sessions um, during the week and on weekends to kind of accommodate as many teaching assistants as possible. And they're about three uh, to four hours long, so about half a day. Um, if you do find that you're having conflicts or issues with your training, with your professor as a TA, um, Please talk to them first. If you find you're not having a uh, resolution there, then work up the chain within your department. If they're still having issues, you can come to our office and then we can help mediate and kind of make sure that everybody um, gets their questions and issues resolved fairly. And one new thing that we'll be doing this semester is providing a set of online resources, so more teaching resources, uh, conflict resolution, diversity, different things that may come up in the classroom so that you get a little bit more support um, if you feel like you're having questions or just need some more assistance. Okay, and the set of our guidelines kind of outlines your expectations. Um, how many hours a week you're supposed to work, what types of work uh, that you'll be doing as a research assistant and as a teaching assistant. Uh, we also talk about a little bit of time management, how to open those lines of communication, uh, research collaboration, and uh, research permissions. Like if you are a research assistant and contributing very heavily to your professor's work, um, you'll need to discuss and work out how each person will get credit. 
and dealing with harassment discrimination from a student, from a, t uh, a professor, other folks on campus, things like that. And if you're also finding that you're having issues with time management, stress, um, again, harassment, discrimination, diversity, different things like that, uh, we have a set of resources that you can go to folks on campus and get the support and that help that you need. Um, again, this is not a be all end all. Your department may have their own rules. Uh, your school may have their own rules, but kind of this is kind of an overarching thing. So you can say, okay, I have a question about this. Here's kind of what I saw in these guidelines. Do we have something like that? And so you can kind of get more information to kind of understand, start that conversation of where your department is and then uh, what these other guidelines may help you with. And then again, a little bit more about the training sessions. Again, these are kind of a wider bird's eye view, very general. Uh, we go into a little bit of what teaching is. Uh, I think uh, Martin has like, a grading exercise that he goes over. And then we go over the guidelines, a little bit of technology training, various things like that. Um, again, like opening those lines of communication and giving you some of the tools to start off teaching on a good foot. And also allows you to meet with other TAs and kind of see what, what they're doing, what their ideas are, and kind of gain from their experiences as well. Okay, and then Martin covered the training session content. All right. Uh, I'm going to first say that I think uh, Marche undersold herself a little bit. <laughs> um, the, the office, the Graduate Studies Office, is, is new here at American University, and it arose in part because uh, somebody, some uh, keen observer of American University, <laughs> noted that we have no training or orientation mm -hmm. for teaching assistants at AU, and decided that this was probably a wise thing and part of our responsibility. Uh, as a graduate institution. Uh, so the, the Graduate Studies Office was developed. Uh, uh, associate Dean, is that John's title? Dean of Graduate Studies. Dean of Graduate Studies, uh, Jonathan Tubman, was put in, put in charge of this. Uh, and then Marche has been the point person for uh, organizing all that their office does. Last summer, then, they, uh, they contacted me to ask if I would run uh, these uh, training slash orientation sessions uh, at the beginning of this uh, 2013 fall semester. Um, I had a lot of interest in that. I came from a graduate program that had really intensive uh, teaching training stuff, and so I mm -hmm. went to where I went as Siobhan did to, mm -hmm. to get that kind of training, but it doesn't always happen. Uh, maybe at American universities more than European, but still mm -hmm. there's uh, obvious kind of cracks in the system. Um, so AU has invested uh, clearly uh, time, money, and resources into enhancing the training and uh, experience for, for teaching assistants uh, here uh, across the university. Uh, but a couple of the, the sort of problems that we ran into when, when putting together these training orientation sessions was recognizing that this is university-wide, yeah. but when you're speaking to that general of an audience, when you've got somebody who's in clinical psychology versus somebody who's in English versus somebody who's in SIS, how do you do a grading exercise? Right? Like th those are completely different sorts of things. Um, what kinds of expectations could I convey to the collected TAs when their experiences are going to be so vastly different across the university? So what we decided upon for these uh, and I really treated the sessions more as orientations rather than as training, um, uh, were a number of these uh, key kind of main elements that I thought all teaching assistants would uh, need to grapple with, encounter, or perhaps need some assistance with. Uh, academic integrity, and um, I have unfortunately been involved in all but the actual cheating myself parts uh, <laughs> the academic yeah, integrity exactly. process. <laughs> that is bad. Uh, submitting things, charging people, sitting in, in judgment. Uh, <laughs> uh, so um, I got some information from uh, Michael Manson, who used to run the AIC, uh, uh, to sort of talk about the general issues of academic integrity. And that involves a lot of things, from students cheating on exams or, or papers, uh, to perhaps uh, on occasion people have, uh, research assistants have found that their uh, advisors have maybe not given proper credit to somebody, either the research assistant him or herself, or to somebody in the text. And so there's lots of kinds of issues uh, to, to talk about that, much more expansive than what you say to students in, in a class. Uh, time management, uh, a, a general kind of thing. Uh, we used the, the new guidelines that I, pa I passed them around oh, okay. mm -hmm. um, to talk about what the expectations were to make sure that 
you know, and some departments uh, are very clear about the time expectations of their TAs, and others there is no guidelines given whatsoever. I know that uh, my philosophy and religion is very small. It's sort of like, oh, Martin, you have a TA. Have fun, right? And then, <laughs> and that's kind of it, right? And, and which works in a small department. Larger departments maybe need to be more organized, but. Um, those guidelines hopefully will start to establish at least a baseline expectation uh, for what teaching assistants can expect and what professors can ask of their teaching assistants so that the ground rules are clear for everyone. And then I encouraged ways uh, for the TAs to, uh, incoming TAs to manage that time because quite obviously if you're assigned 20 hours a week, the weeks at the beginning of the semester, you'll probably be putting in five hours, and then at the end of the semester, you'll maybe be putting in 30. Um, so to keep track of that, to recognize that there will be ebbs and flows and, and that sort of thing, but to give them a heads up, sort of broadcast uh, what the semester will look like. Um, give them an opportunity just to think about that. Oh yeah, there are gonna be crunch points at various times. Uh, communication was really what I used as the, as the main theme of the, all of the orientations and everybody here has spoken uh, quite nicely about that so I, I just want to reiterate that. Um, I do think of it importantly as a, uh, a bi-directional kind of thing. Uh, we uh, professors often don't do a very good job of communicating and so you should ask us and we should be comfortable with asking, uh, being asked for uh, clear guidelines or whatnot. Um, but we also need to be very, very clear with our uh, assistants, uh, what we want, what we expect, um, and to give opportunity for, for feedback from them. So uh, that communication then also extends to the, uh, to the undergraduate students. And I think that um, one of the important roles of teaching assistants is to be a kind of liaison. Unfortunately, not all professors are all that engaged with their undergraduates, perhaps. Um, and the TAs can perform an important role there to convey to faculty members um, what the experience is in the classroom, what kinds of struggles, what things are really working, maybe what things aren't, um, to help us out in that direction uh, or, or in that uh, kind of communication. Uh, there's also um, sometimes teaching assistants will know much more about what's going on in the personal life of undergraduates if there are struggles. Um, and I encouraged everyone to uh, keep the professors informed. I said that I would much rather be the recipient of uh, a BCC or something on 40 emails that ended in nothing rather than at the end of the semester receive one email that was a complete disaster and was just, you know, the end of that experience where I could do nothing, right? So um, encouraging that kind of open communication and, and letting the TAs know that they perform a, a vital role in uh, being liaisons between the undergraduates and ourselves. Um, technology training, I uh, tapped uh, the shoulder of uh, one of our friends over in the library who ran a session on Blackboard, uh, uh, and that was a sort of intensive technical kind of training thing, but I think it was helpful um, for the guts of Blackboard. Um, I think there are other ways that we might expand that uh, coming up next, next fall. Um, and then the Academic Support and Access Center, I also asked them to come and speak about uh, the various issues that their office deals with in terms of uh, resources for students who are having whatever variety of, of uh, challenges with, with uh, learning. One of the great things they said is, and we are also available to you, graduate students, if you need help with anything, we're happy to do that. Um, they have really amazing resources there. So the point of the orientation was to uh, give a little bit of that bird's eye view as to what a semester is going to look like. Let them know the general university-wide expectations of the TA experience and to also um, encourage them to communicate very explicitly with their uh, particular advisors as to the specifics of that situation. Um, I would hope that in the future this would be the kind of uh, orientation thing, uh, program that could lead into specific training things, so maybe two months down the road we break off and do for like CAS or SOC or COGOT or whomever um, particular kinds of training things that are more specific to uh, colleges or disciplines. But that uh, this is still very much in development. I had tried to take a informal poll of um, my, my colleagues here to say, hey, what would you like your TA to know before he or she showed up in your classroom? Um, and so I'm still actively soliciting that kind of information because I know that a lot of uh, professors sort of don't know what to do all of the time. So we could use some instruction in that as well. Uh, so I'm trying to 
be that liaison between faculty, TAs, the graduate uh, office program, and, and make that all happen. Um, so uh, I found myself a little surprisingly in between all of this, but that's what I'm here for, I think, and mm -hmm. I'm happy to encourage that sort of conversation. I think that's yes, what I to say. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, so we really wanted to uh, present quite shortly, which we, we've done. There's an, enough time here for, um, as I said at the beginning, um, questions or anything that is unclear, but also to um, feedback your own experiences and, and share and you know, discuss maybe uh, issues that you've had to overcome or how you've overcome them or if you've struggled to overcome that because we have, I think, some, some people who can give some really good uh, advice here. So. Or, and I would put a plug in, if there are things that either as TAs or professors you might want to see happen in our orientation sure. training things, I'm all ears for that. Because this is very much a, this is a professor-led thing, <laughs> and I'm make it more a content-led kind of thing here, so. but I want this to be kind of an open discussion because we have these two former students or TAs over here um, as well as faculty. Um, I mean, ideally a student would be intrinsically motivated to teach and would care a lot about it and then they would care <laughs> if they would, you know, want to do well. Um, but when that's not the case, I think that um, having a structure, like a very clear structure around you know, setting expectations, all the things we've talked about. Um, also, giving feedback, you know, maybe it'll be a more regular kind of evaluative thing, um, or checking in, um, I don't know, developing kind of guidelines for what is it that you should be achieving, and how can we measure that? Um, this is just broad stuff that I'm thinking, but, yeah. Um, and maybe this is uh, going a little above and beyond because I am transitioning into that role of an instructor instead of a TA, but maybe having a quick kind of conversation about what are your goals for this yeah. TA yeah. ship. Um, and even if <coughs> you don't want to teach in the future, uh, you know, maybe talking about how other students who haven't wanted to teach, I can think of several students mm -hmm. who've gone through the 116 TA ship and I don't want to do this. And then at the end they think, actually this was a great experience. At least it gave me public speaking skills or mm -hmm. you know, right. confidence or something. And maybe just kind of instilling that at the beginning, mm -hmm. um, even if somebody says, this is not what I want to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was wondering even... Is it a response to... Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I'm very graduate student and policy department. And I, I wonder even if, if, if part of answering this question is, is looking even bigger, right? Mm -hmm. And is if... Um, putting the, the cog in place like the Office of the Graduate Studies is beginning to do to make AU a place where you know if you're going to go and you're going to be graduate there, 
this is going to be part of your experience, right? This heavy mm -hmm. training that Professor Oliver was talking about, um, that is obviously um, lacking in a lot of ways here. Um, so that a student knows, like, it's not just your job, you need this coming in. And of course, you're still going to get the people who don't want to do it, but I, I think that might, that might be, you know, part of tackling it to how can the university set those expectations. Right, provide a framework. I, I was, um, I agree with that, and I think that, um, to use an example from the anthropology department, there's we usually have our, uh, our assignment, our 20 hour per week assignment split into two um, research assistant, teaching assistant. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes, because of the, the way there's a breakdown, some people are asked to double up as a double teaching. Mm -hmm. or, uh, but very rarely does it happen the other way around as a double research. But those are the kind of things that aren't, I think, necessarily made clear going in. And mm -hmm. a notable difference is that students are asked. These are the research assignments available. Which would you prefer? What are you, what, which of these talks to your interest? But we're not asked that about classes and teaching. Mm -hmm. um, however, there is an effort to rotate so that people don't end up doing the same thing all the time. Um, so I think that, yeah, at a departmental le it, um, level, you know, talking to um, your colleagues and thinking about when students first come in as the, as the new cohort coming in, do we sit down and, and talk to them about the value of teaching? Do we sit down and talk to them within the department about the, the learning outcomes? As you were saying, it's not just to learn how to be a teacher, but um, you know, not ideal, but maybe um, it prevents you from discovering you've got a bad student <laughs> at the end, <laughs> at the end right. of that, that you could, that, um, like after three weeks and now you're stuck. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> do that, yeah. I, exactly. But maybe part of that communication rather than being one on one with the student that you've been assigned could be incoming cohort faculty who are going to have teaching assistants assigned to them to have a bigger conversation. I also think it's very important to be up front with the students. Uh, we have all of our doctoral students come in for interview days so, and they're very information dense days. But if, if I had been told Mom, I, my interview that when you get here, you're actually going to be teaching two sections, because that's how we used to yeah. do it, of mm -hmm. a psych lab on your own with great support. She gives you the info. She lets you do it yourself. It's wonderful that way and always backs you up. That would have swayed my decision to accept my acceptance, mm -hmm. but it may have swayed other people who don't really want that type of experience. Mm -hmm. There's also great inequity in teaching assistantships. I have, I have a teaching assistant for a um, a senior level research course, and he does a lot of facilitation with students on a lot of grading and communication. Mm -hmm. I have TDs for a 64 student section of an undergrad intro class, and they are actively and heavily involved. So that feeling that, oh, my friend does this, but I'm stuck doing this, also kind of comes up mm -hmm. with these types of assignments. But being up front with the students. But I think also that uh, emphasizes that different TAs for the same class might have different skills. Mm -hmm. So right. there might be someone who's wonderful at organization, but not so great at the teaching part of it. But then, so that idea of like the good and bad TA, it might be a little bit, of, okay, that conversation isn't necessarily how do you improve, but kind of, okay, what can you, you need to do this. How do you want to do it? What can you bring to this? And trying to emphasize the good parts rather than <laughs> <laughs> worrying so much about the bad. I think no one ever died doing <laughs> and following up on, on the distinctions to good and bad, so bad TAs either because of skills, and the skills then skills are relatively easy to build often. The motivation, um, I think, for your class, that's going to be difficult. I, I, I find it easier in classes where there's not the weekly contact with the students to try to find the hooks for the TA. What, what does the TA love? Mm -hmm. And it might not be sitting down for a conversation about the course and what their goals are, but finding out who they are as a person mm -hmm. and then trying to find the carrots for this kind of work with that, mm -hmm. that particular person. But, and that's easier for me than I think than, than, than your context. It's a little marketing, Yeah. For the most of the time, I'm extremely that. I mean, like, we have good students, I mean, they, they do really well, but you know, why did you find that I guess my question or comment is about, I, I, I had a TA last semester. I, I wouldn't say, I would say she was more good than bad, 
Uh, but I give out a mid-semester evaluation to my, informally to my students, and I never expected that comments would focus on her. And so uh, I was I was kind of taken aback, and, that, and that's why I'm I'm here. Uh, and it, it, some of the comments were it was two or three students out of 60 across two sections, uh, and some of the comments were pr really pretty disparaging. So I, I I didn't share them explicitly with my TA, but I made sure the following class I didn't have my TA there because she attended. Uh, the, the class uh, with me, um, and I was able to sort of get out some verbally some comments as well. But I guess my question would be, you know, what kind of resources do I have at that point? Because I don't want them affecting my SETs, which is really what those informal evals are, are driven by. Is I want to kind of get some some feedback so I can mm -hmm. change the the ship midstream. Okay. Um, so you know what what avenues do I have? I mean, she did go through. This was an undergraduate TA. She did go through a, a training session. I don't know if there's further training for her, but um, I, I guess I was kind of caught there midstream, not quite knowing what to do uh, in terms of my TA. Yeah. Uh, we did have, um, and it was a little bit of a surprise to me, but a few undergraduate TAs come to the orientation things. Now, I hadn't expected that, and so it was a, a little bit surprised. I'm not sure how explicitly to direct uh, assistance to them, but I, I, that's a tricky wicket. I'm not sure yeah. that the Office of Graduate Studies is... Yeah, maybe something to do with some more within the department. Um, and I don't know the nature of, of the comments, um, but if it was something that was disrupting the classroom or, or otherwise, it, it seemed like it kind of was in a sense. Maybe that's something that letting us know we could kind of help with, uh, with the associate dean with the department to start to try to see if we could smooth out some of those issues. What, one of the other things I guess I'd suggest Try and figure out the goodness of the feedback that's coming. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. two or three students plants a question in my head. Um, I wonder if there's something that is really the teaching assistant and the teaching assistant that's causing the problem. Mm -hmm. But I want to know more. Um, one of the things that I might do is if I've gotten to know some of the students in the class relatively well, just if I can have a conversation with them about how the class is going, what do you think about the teaching assistant, uh, I, that's, I would work to that a little bit more easily. Mm -hmm. But try to find out a little bit more what's behind those. I, I haven't had an undergraduate assistant, but uh, over the years, both younger and women teachers that I've run into, I think sometimes get a hard time unfairly. Um, it, it's relatively easy for me uh, as a very large male uh, <laughs> and uh, with my PhD and all that sort of stuff to get respect to students. And I think sometimes students are struggling with the class and looking for an explanation outside of themselves for why they are. And younger and more women um, TAs and I think can often be, be an easy time. Did you feel it was a, a sort of a personal attack on this TA or a kind of dissatisfaction with their role? Um, I, I felt one of the comments definitely was a personal attack. So I no. think this is just a personality conflict. But then when I had more than one comment, the other ones were directed at a simulation that I had done in the class and maybe I gave the TA more leeway than I should have in the, in the simulation. Yeah. And initially, it was partly my fault that I should have communicated better than what role I wanted her to have uh, in the simulation. So, you know, when it was more than one comment, then I, again, opened it up verbally, which did, and I did hear back from some students, but it was in one section, not the other. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that, that's why I felt like it, maybe something's just going on with this one section, yeah. the dynamic in that, that individual class. Yeah. Uh, so, um, I'd say as well that students in classrooms talk to each other. Yes. So, you know, sense. say yeah. you know, yeah. after class one of them says, oh, did you notice that? Wasn't that awful? Mm -hmm. Then it kind of, someone's like, well, I guess, yeah, that was kind of awful, yeah. Right. <laughs> like, and no, it, think about and, it. And, you know, if, that, if that's happened with a, a smaller, right. a, you know, three or four students have had that conversation, then that might have planted that seed that stuck with them. And that didn't happen in the other class, so it, 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 it could be something like that. I wouldn't want to dismiss it like that and say that... Um, it'd be good to, it's good to follow up on things, but... I suppose a question, another question about this is though, is who is it that on the university 
and I'm still fairly new at AU, who assigns the undergrad teaching? Is there like an office that's re responsible no. for? I don't believe so. No. No. So it's kind of within each department. Yeah. Right. That's a grant, but there's not like a, an administrative. No. Resource for them, yeah, no. which is mm -hmm. unfortunate because that's a. That's one of the other things that probably we're trying situation. to get in place. If there's anything right now. Yeah. I mean, I my from my own experience with GFAPs and whatnot is uh, I'm uh, very cautious in some ways about the kinds of involvement that the undergraduate students have with mm -hmm. you know try to make them super helpful and resourceful and give them content heavy kinds of work, but uh, make sure that there's no confusion that what they do will somehow negatively or adversely affect how the students perform in the class. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. like, so there's no great anxiety. Yeah, right. I'm confused. Like, do undergrads, they can't assess other undergraduate work. Uh, well, this no. is tricky, right? Okay. So they, they can oh, that's grade, true, yeah. okay. but they, they can, can mark. mark. What does that mean? <laughs> 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 uh, some, some check X, check some, X. Some yeah. departments are more liberal about this than others. <laughs> so uh, there is some, but, but that opens up obvious areas of potential confusion and conflict. So I think I would also make very clear with my students, I am responsible for grades. End of story. Mm -hmm. right? right. Like. Um, one of the reasons why I wanted to come to this um, talk, or this panel today was it's the first time as a graduate student I've had the opportunity to sit in a room with fellow graduate students, faculty, and people from uh, administration, administrative positions. Um, this is my second year um, doing this, and, and so I, I applaud uh, this panel. <laughs> but also I think that's kind of um, telling in a lot of ways um, about the opportunities that we have as a wider community to come together and speak about these things. Um, and yeah, I'm kind of a big picture person. So I apologize because it's a little too abstract. Um, but one of my, oh, something that's been very consistent for me since I've been a TA and graduate student here at AU is really trying to figure out where do I belong? Because we talk about some of these dichotomies. Are you a student or are you a teacher, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then there's some smaller things like grad students aren't quite staff, but we're not quite student workers. And that yeah. plays out in weird, funny ways. Mm -hmm. um, so you have the, for example, College of Arts and Sciences telling you, or telling us, um, don't work over break. You know, don't work until the semester starts. We're not going to pay you for it. But then you have your faculty emailing you, you need to help me design the syllabus. You need to help me grade. Um, and so it's kind of this, this, we're being pulled in all directions. And I think some of it is easier to confront than others. Mm -hmm. Like, I think just as a younger PhD student, I'm always going to have a problem. Am I a student or am I a, a, a teacher for these students? Um, but I, I guess I'm more expressing rather than giving a lot of productive things to work for. But I think that this move towards providing more types of structured services for TAs mm -hmm. and faculty is a good step forward mm -hmm. in addressing some of these larger issues. And I'm, I'm not one for rules and for obligation, <laughs> but I think that TAs should absolutely need to go to training. Yeah. I mean, I think mm -hmm. it, it was highly disappointing for me, I'll, I'll say. Yeah. Um, I, I came from a large undergraduate institution where, you know, we like, and uh, some of this ego too, right? So, ego, not being confident in yourself, not being confident in your ability to perform, or will they like me, will the professor think I'm good, you know, mm -hmm. things like that. But also wanting to be a better student, wanting to be a better teacher, um, and having the tools that are available to do that. Mm -hmm. So just express things to share. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If, if we had one response in in the, the comments, the general comments. Um, someone expressing, uh, the graduate student expressing frustration with the fact that in the graduate, sorry, in the teaching evaluations, there was a box where it said, um, how like how was the TA, yeah. and that their that their the faculty member they'd been assigned to also gave an evaluation of them as a TA but that they were at no point asked to give an evaluation of the teacher. teacher right. mm -hmm. And they said that, that felt really, you know, that was really frustrating. Really yeah. And I think that, um, so I certainly don't think that you're the only person feeling that way. Um, I know that in when I got here, I didn't have any training. Um, and I was told very mixed information. Um, I was told, this is how you report plagiarism, in the, my Green Book seminar, and then my instructor was like, 
oh, you've got to give these students a class a uh, chance, it's their first time, we've got to be very relaxed about the way that they cite. Yeah. So I was like, oh, okay, what do I do? My second assignment was an excellent, excellent teacher. I learned so much from her, but she didn't know the policies and procedures, and she told me that I couldn't grade, that I could only mark. And I later found out when I was the next assignment, here's the grading that you need to do. And I was like, I can't, I'm not allowed to grade. <laughs> <laughs> and they said, what? Uh, yeah, you, you are, you, you kind of have to. And I was like, well, uh, so it's quite, quite well, confusing like, because, there's, um, because these kind of problems lead to inconsistencies of it and information being passed on. Um, but yeah, I think that an opportunity to, I also would like to give feedback about teaching skills. But, uh, yeah, I think so. I think that is a, a common feeling. It's something that the Office of Graduate Studies, I, I think we encountered a little bit in planning the, the training orientation things, is that we in no way want to uh, impinge upon the autonomy of departments or colleges in this, right. and so we're mm -hmm. very, very sensitive to that, but it has been the wild, wild west, and so we're so. Yeah. trying to be the soft marshal in town. <laughs> right, <laughs> kind of bringing up some issues <laughs> and letting, kind of like, okay, kind of let you know what you didn't know a little bit before, because you can't ask questions about things that you don't know are out mm -hmm. there. Um, so I think it's kind of what we're doing right now while we try to herd all the, the cattle in and figure out how to maybe standardize across the par uh, departments a little bit more while letting people have their autonomy and kind of do what's best for them and for th and their discipline. I'm really enjoying the, um, the analogy. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, how far is that? It's like ranching. Yeah. And right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so w we're just kind of at the end of our time, but I mean, if anyone has any final comments. I just, the reason I wanted to come today is which I want to get funny stuff I didn't even know I needed to learn. Um, <laughs> that I am self described type A and adaptively obsessive compulsive. <laughs> 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 um, so, in that vein, and wanting to be in control and understand the temperature of my class constantly, not look at one essay mm -hmm. of 150 students, I read them all. I vastly underutilize my TAs, and I've been thinking of it out from one side that this is my assistant. They're assisting me teach. Mm -hmm. But then to come around the other side and say, I should be providing some valuable training because I just got some amazingly valuable training. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm here mm -hmm. now. Right. So trying to find that balance, I'm, I'm struggling, especially in a second semester sequence with the same four TAs. Mm -hmm. I have, I've had them do enough, but not as much as their hours probably stipulate. And now I find we're repeating the same set of courses. I have a little less for them to do, but I kind of want to keep it up. Mm -hmm. so I'm a little, I kind of toggle back and forth. But every course is different, but most of my courses are lecture style, mm -hmm. like examination based. Too, but not like that. Yeah. I just <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I manage. I can not normally to. I have TAs who teach the labs. And they do all the work. Got <laughs> <laughs> I have TAs which I normally underutilize also. You know, the grade. And I actually ask them, do you want to do more? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you just want to grade, I'm fine with it. You say, I hate grading. So, <laughs> I, do it. I should. I can't do it. I can't do it. I think I'm, I'm feeling a little anxiety about that too because I'm also cognizant of. They're grad students, they've got a lot on their plate. Right. I don't want to overburden them, but at the same time, I don't want them to feel like, yeah, I'm not using them enough, or they're not getting the experience that they want. So, what I was, what I, this semester I had a fantastic TA who I said, you know, you have to grade. Mm -hmm. And she said, can I do? Da -da 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 -da. Mm -hmm. I said, yes, you can do that. <laughs> Look for you. <laughs> you know, she, she came to every class, which I never required, because as a PA, I used to hate it. So, I made this promise to myself and I would never do it to others. <laughs> <laughs> she came to every single mm -hmm. class. She had, she, she was a leader in many sessions. She had a blackboard discussion. I could go on and mm -hmm. on and on of what mm -hmm. this PA did for me. I, I mean, it was amazing. But the way I utilize her is that what else do you want to do? You know, mm -hmm. this is your minimum. Mm -hmm. so Involving them in the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Right. This is, this, is what I, this is the minimum I want from you. Anything else, I take it. I. I really, I mean, the, but the is still to tell me. I actually take it into consideration because they, they are in touch with the students. Mm -hmm. Open time for a meeting. So mm -hmm. they tell me this thing sucks. It probably sucks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so I, think, I not only believe it, I try to change. Mm -hmm. But I think that communication, I, guess, I want this for 
you what else you want to do. But letting them know there's no overtime. Yeah. Right, you still <laughs> get 20 hours. <laughs> See, I think I think some of the the comments that Kate and Tony shared really speaks to that you know they're human beings, they're capable, but talk to them, you know, let them know that they can tell you when they're ha when they have too much time. So don't presume they're overworked. Say, yeah. let me know when you're feeling overworked, and we can uh, arrange that and, and balance that. Um, and also, would you like to help me? That these are the exam questions I've come up with. What do you think of them? Yeah. Have you got any suggestions? Yeah. And it might only be, you know, 20 minutes, half an hour, but it makes people feel like right. they did in case case em empowered. Um, when I the, the, the yeah, oh, sorry, uh, the the teacher I was working with mm -hmm. when she said that I could I couldn't grade, mm -hmm. she got me to technically mark everything and put a little post-it note with what I thought of the papers, and then she went over every single one of them. So they were double graded, better for the students. I learned something, and she felt in control. So. <laughs> yeah, that's adaptive. Yeah. So. Uh -huh. <laughs> So, um, yeah, we're out of time. Thank you so much Thank for coming. You.